Um, it's weird how the cat just came up right now. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? We're working. Hey y'all, it's Lauren from Hot For Food and we're gonna do something fun today. Uh, I'm making a little sweet, a little summer sweet treat. And basically I'm bringing the outdoors indoors because not everybody likes nature and camping and smelling like campfire. So I'm gonna show you how to make s'more tacos from the comfort of your own home without mosquitoes and grass making your nose itchy and all of that stuff. Is that just me that has these problems? Okay, well anyways, these s'more tacos are delicious. We're gonna start by making the cookie taco shell, the vehicle in which you will put the chocolate and marshmallows. And then we're just gonna roast the marshmallows on the gas burner. Pretty easy, you can also do it into the broiler in your stove. Uh, but anyway, this is a fun recipe for kids, families, whatever, they pack up really nice as well, so you can take them camping uh, or for a weekend away if you'd like. So let's get started, we're gonna bake. So you're gonna add all-purpose flour to a mixing bowl. Then add some cinnamon, baking soda, and sea salt. Then combine this and set it aside. So just get a smaller bowl or dish to do the liquid and sugar. So we're gonna add sugar and brown sugar, and then non-dairy milk, vegetable oil, and a little bit of vanilla extract. And then just combine this with a whisk until it's smooth. All right, then add this to the flour mixture, and then stir it to combine the dough. So once it starts looking like this, you can go in with your hands to get it more combined. So it's a little crumbly, but once you start mashing it together with your hand, it's gonna bring it all together and make it quite a smooth cookie dough. So you should be able to press it together, just like that. So gather the dough at this stage and you're going to place it onto a large piece of parchment paper. And then just with your hands, bring it together a little bit more. The warmth of your hands will make the dough a little softer and smoother. Just like that. And then you're gonna fold the parchment over and slightly flatten the dough. Fold up the excess paper like this and then take this disc of dough and we're gonna refrigerate it for at least one hour just to get it chilled and really packed together. And of course I have one already done. So now we're gonna roll this out and cut out our little cookies and I'm gonna show you how they're going to form into cookie shells. Okay, so you need a cookie sheet, obviously, and some aluminum foil. And you know what, good thing we're inside and not outside making s'mores like idiots because it's pouring rain outside. So you can't go outside anyways. So you're gonna take a sheet of aluminum foil that's just slightly wider than your baking sheet. And then we're gonna make foil rods which sounds funny. So now you've got like this foil rod that's like an inch and a half, and then tuck it under the sheet just to hold it in place. This is the simplest, easiest way to do this. The cookies are gonna drape over the foil to form the shell. This is really the only way you can do this. I know some people form um, shells by using the bottom of a muffin tin, but you can't do that with these cookies because they're so delicate and they can't, if they go like this, they'll drape over themselves, whereas this, they drape down and they cook evenly if you follow the recipe exactly. This cookie dough isn't really one you should improvise or change things because I can't guarantee what's gonna happen. The dough is such a texture with all the right amounts of sugar and everything that when they bake they don't fall off these rods uh, and they have to be like the perfect thickness which I'm gonna explain in a second. So I know it seems a little bit tricky but it's not really it's not that hard, I'm just advising you that I don't know what will happen if you change out the sugars or replace the flours because I made these cookies so that they stick together and hold their shape. So your dough could be left in the refrigerator uh, for longer than an hour, uh, but just make sure you warm it up a little bit at room temperature before you start rolling it out. It should be cold but pliable. In the parchment paper, you're gonna roll this out to about one eighth of an inch thick. No more, no less. The thing is, if it's too thick or too thin, it will crack while it's baking. So that's why one eighth of an inch thick is the perfect thickness. So depending on uh, your roller and everything, this dough is so pliable that it doesn't stick. 
it's oily enough and that's why it's made that way. So you can actually just roll it out without the parchment if you're having trouble, just so you can see how thin it should be. And then you're gonna take a three inch cookie cutter and you are gonna cut out circles. Now just remove the excess from around the circles. You're gonna roll this out again. And then these should just easily peel off like that. You need to lightly grease up these foil rods. So I like just the aerosol oil, it's easy. You can also just use your fingers and make sure that the sides are lightly coated. Then take your cookie and place it over the rod. Okay, so you'll likely want to do one batch at a time, eight and then eight. So bake one tray at a time in an oven preheated to 350 for 12 minutes. Okay, so when they're nice and baked, they're golden brown, they look like this, and they have formed perfect little cookie taco shells. So you might notice that some of your shells have a little bit of cracking in them and they may have gone in the oven like that, but if you bake them at the right temperature in a preheated oven, they shouldn't fall apart at all. I mean, I've lost one when baking these before, but that's probably just because I rolled it too thick or too thin. So anyways, a little bit of cracking's fine. It still holds its shape. It still looks like a taco. So it's all good. So now you probably have a microwave, you can just melt some chocolate in the microwave, but I don't. So this is just a double boiler. There's a little bit of water down here. We're gonna get that boiling and then you want a bowl on top and you need about 100 grams of chocolate. So like one of these chocolate bars, a vegan friendly one, of course, and just break it up into pieces and get it melted so it's nice and smooth. And while we're doing that, we can also char up our marshmallows. So this will melt in uh, just a few minutes and then once it's melted, make sure you turn off the boiling water. There's a few ways you can do the marshmallows. If you wanna torch them with a blowtorch, go ahead. I just like to use my gas burner here. You can also put them on a baking tray and throw them under the broiler of your stove and just watch them very closely and you'll have to turn them as you do that. So here we have to turn them as well. But you're essentially just going in the flame like this. You know, just like a campfire. Woo, don't burn yourself. Don't drop them. This is very dangerous. Watch your hair. <laughs> All these hazards. Anyway, look how toasty they get. Oh yes, these are vegan marshmallows, of course. Marshmallows have gelatin in them, so you do have to look for vegan ones. Look at those sexy s'more tacos, y'all. Totally vegan, vegan chocolate, vegan marshmallows, homemade vegan cookie shell. Oh my God. Definitely messy. Mmm. This is actually my breakfast today. Oops. The cookie consistency is perfect. Mm. So the reason I made this recipe is because it's so impossible to find vegan friendly graham crackers in Canada. In fact, I don't even think there are any. There is this gluten free brand, but they taste like sawdust. So even if you don't wanna like get into the whole taco making foil rod business, you could just cut out squares of the dough and bake those on a parchment line baking sheet and make your own graham crackers. They're more like sugar cookies, but I like it better actually. They're not dry or anything, not too sweet, kind of perfectly sweet to complement everything. Mmm. And now we basically have dessert taco shells for whatever you want ice cream tacos, banana, strawberry, fruit tacos with chocolate. The world is your taco to explore. Oh man, I'm making a mess. Uh, 
Do I look okay? Okay. Also, if you want to pack up your shells, just put them in like a Tupperware um, and take them to the campfire if you're going to go outside. I'm not. Roast up your hot marshmallow in the fire and then just put a little square of chocolate or a couple squares of chocolate in there and it, the marshmallow will be, will be hot enough to melt the chocolate. And then just let it sit for a little bit like that near the fire and then eat it and it'll be even more gooey. It's hard to get it really gooey when you're roasting them indoors, but literally who cares? It's sugar and it's delicious. Mmm, okay. So there you go, s'more tacos, vegan s'more tacos for the end of summer parties and barbecues and things that you're gonna be doing. Follow along every week here on our YouTube channel, Hot For Food, subscribe. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the whole shebang, at Hot For Food. If you make these or if you make some other type of dessert taco using these shells, please share the photos um, or the Insta stories or the snaps or whatever and tag us in it so I can see because I love seeing all your creations. Okay, so that's it for me. I'll see you next Wednesday right here in the kitchen, cooking up vegan love, hot for food all day long. Bye-bye.